Good morning. Let's wave to each other. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and bless your holy name. As we hear your word, dear Lord, recreate in us spirits of obedience that can hear you when you speak. Begin with me and do it with your people, my Father. You said you'll be with us when we congregate together in your name, Christ. Here, we are so many waiting for you. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Please sit. As Canon Senator has said, my name is Canon John Kucha. I love the Lord as my personal savior. I served here up to 2015 when I moved to all souls. When I was coming, my wife couldn't come with me because we have a ministry we are doing and she sent me the greeting. Do you receive them? Yes. Also, I spoke with a few. So that was one of my curates and uh, he also sent greetings. Do you receive them? Thank you. I want to say it's really a big pleasure and I want to thank my brother, Pro Canon Provost, who has given me chance once again to serve at this pulpit. I don't take it for granted that he has given me the chance. And I want really to go very fast. When I got the, the, the theme, it's about reality of heaven, I was a little afraid. I said, it's easy to fall a victim of what everybody now is talking about, about hell, about demons, about uh, blessings and spirits and every other thing. And you may not see, you may see hell, and you don't see heaven and the life that Christ came to give to us. I want one to thank God because he's so kind. As I really meditated upon these two texts, God brought something into my heart and I thought probably this is where God wants me to go. And I think probably where he wants you to go also as Christians. I, I looked at many times when we talk about heaven and we talk about hell, we feel like it's something to come, something very far away, and we are all waiting for it. And at times, that's why at times it doesn't make sense to you, because after all, it hasn't come yet, isn't it? And so because of this, that challenge itself became a little easier then how do I talk about the reality of hell? And how do I talk about the reality of heaven? After all, we have never been there. Jesus says, it's only him who has been to heaven, the one who came down. So nobody else knows about it. And I felt, but we know, we have a little experience every time. And that's why I have four points that I want to share with you and probably by the end of those four points, we'll have seen exactly what's the reality about heaven and the hell. Personally, standing here, I'd rather talk about heaven and don't talk about hell. My mind wants to remain positive because a positive mind will guide me better than a negative mind. Praise the Lord. So the first thing that I, as I looked at this, I saw history versus revelation. That's the first thing. If I am going to understand about heaven well, I must first understand about history and about what's the challenge. How do they divide between history, the things that we know, and the revelation that God gives to us. When you talk about history, when I was a little boy, I remember, I, 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 I used to, my life was just contained in one big circle that went around. Probably you were like me, where you woke up, the schools were open, you went to school, the term ended, you closed the school, you went back, stayed at home, the schools, the, 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 the vacation ends, the school is open again, you go back to school, and it's just like a circle, isn't it? And when I looked at it also, when I grew up, I discovered the same circle almost happens in life because that's nature. Nature has it that it will be raining, then the rainy season ends, we come to 
time when it's dry season, we come to harvest, we come to planting, we come to rain, we come to dry season, we come to planting, we come to harvest, isn't it? It's cyclic. There's no end. This kind of thing, thinking, at times is what denies us the chance of seeing. Where history also becomes something like a dreary thing that goes on. Revelation is different. God at one time burst into that history, into that cyclic thing, and said there is a destiny of creation where it's going. So all of us, the whole creation, which began at a particular time, despite the cyclic thinking and the cyclic feeling that we all have, there is a destiny that is going. This is divine revelation that came. When God at one time stood with Abraham and told him, leave your country and your people, go to a place that I will show you, and when you reach there, I will give you that land, it will be yours. And I will give you many, many people. Your children will be like the sea sand. And when you look at it, then it, 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 something else began. That although history is moving forward, they are and almost like in a circle. There is a destiny that history is going, that creation is going. That destiny now became something that we wait upon and that we can't continue and we can conceive it. As I am waiting now, I stop from just being in school opening and going, probably growing old and then dying and then nothing else goes on. Actually, it became there's a place every soul, everybody is going. That place we are going is we are going towards a destiny that God has created for each one. So I looked at this and I said, yes, that time you can look at what happens now, the, the, the rain, the planting, and that, that kind of thing which I was seeing changed. God burst into history and changed everything. It's from this now, it's easier for us now to conceive about heaven and say, yes, there's a place where everybody's going. God then will one day come, and not just the time that he intervened, and bring to consummation everything that he has created. The greatest thing that happened is when Jesus Christ was born. That's now the second thing that I, I am looking at. Where now? Dawn of the beginning of the movement of creation towards a consummation began when at the birth of Jesus Christ. This culminated when Jesus died and he resurrected. It's no wonder. During the consecration of the bread, the church says, therefore, we, you, you know, he says, therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant. The covenant of the place where we are going. Because this covenant, you fulfilled it and you accepted it. When you raised Jesus from the dead and you seated him at the right hand of the Father. That acceptance is the key. It's no wonder when you go to verse 21 and, and the verse 28 down there. When Jesus goes to Lazarus, he now tells people, the creation has a destiny that is going. The man has a place, has a road that is marked for him and is walking along this road that must be accomplished at one time. And he says, when he meets with mother, mother says, if you were here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus tells him, don't worry, I am the resurrection. When her sister comes, she repeats exactly the same words, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus doesn't answer that one. Why? Because he could see the difference between mother and Mary. The key problem with us is what I said. Many times it becomes a little difficult to believe in this because we have heard about it so much. So heaven becomes somewhere, somewhere up there, which doesn't make sense. When Jesus says this to mother, he is only echoing words that he said in the book of Mark chapter 1 
verse 15, when he comes first, he says, ah, the kingdom of God has come. So, when I look at everything, I say, Kumbe, there's a place where God wants to take us. So, the second point that I want to show is, by this raising, raising of Lazarus from the dead, he's saying, I have power over nature. So, we must look at nature, and the nature that looks like is in just in a cyclic movement comes and God says, mm -mm, I am the one with the power. So Jesus has, God has power over everything, over you, over, you, over me, over us, over the situations that surround us. So for me now, it becomes as I am thinking about heaven, I'm thinking about the, the things that God won for me. The first thing that he won for me is that, that the, the assurance that you are not just going to die. There is resurrection as long as I believe in him. Yes, John says in 3.16, of us we all know, those who believed in him, he gives them, them the power to become children of God. The reality about heaven now can be conceived by the reality that we are not just going to die and remain there. Every death has a resurrection. Praise the Lord. So as I was thinking about this and as I prayed, I felt it's like Jesus inaugurated the kingdom of God, the presence of God in us. You remember, before he was born, Mary is told, you will name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Heaven is the place where God's presence is there. Probably we begin to feel a little heaven down here as we, we believe in Jesus Christ. I like the way children sing. Yes, we, we do everything and we have a little heaven down here. So, what about the reality of heaven? You will experience it. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will experience it when salvation comes into your heart. You will experience it when you give yourself to the Lord. Why? Because God is going to give you the power. You will be able to feel the presence of God in your midst. This is what makes the difference. Hallelujah. Those who are not saved are not like those who are saved. I like to look at the image mother gives to us. It's so clear. Mother comes to Jesus and looks at him and tells him, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus looks at him and says, I am the resurrection and I am life. Do you believe this? She says, yes, I believe it. And the next thing, when you got down the verses, she, when Jesus says, open, the, remove the stone, she says, mm -mm -mm, don't do that. You can't open there because he has been there for the last four days. He must be smelling. Praise the Lord. Jesus looks, doesn't answer her because he knows she doesn't believe even the things she talked with. Look the difference between Mother and Mary. When Mary comes to where Jesus is, she, 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 she just bows down at his feet and she is there. This is the Mary who wiped that Jesus' feet with, his, with, the, with her hair. And because Jesus looked at her and sees the faith she has in him, in fact, he instead, he is troubled in the, in the spirit, the Bible says. And he doesn't even talk. She says the same words. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus looked at her and says, where have you laid him? You can see the difference. When we want to enjoy the presence of God, what it brings, it brings the heart of God to be with us. Those who are with God, if you have given yourself to God and you believe in him, that's when you move the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. When you go back neck near to him and you kneel at your, at your, you go bow at your knees and you tell him about something, he is moved because he can see. He's not like me and you. He looks at the heart.
praise the Lord. So Christ's power over nature is shown by what he does. He can forgive sin. He, he, has, con he has conquest over evil. He, he has conquered death by his resurrection that we celebrated in Easter. Because of this, then we can say he has not only conquered death, he has conquered Satan. Those who are with Christ, they enjoy a little heaven down here. The reality of heaven is not just up there where we will go. It's where Christ lives with his people. The third point that I want to bring is heaven can only be realized when we understand eternal life. Without the understanding of eternal life, we can't understand about God. We can't understand about heaven. Christ will welcome those who are with him. In the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 13 and the following to 18, Jesus looks at the, at the disciples, at Thessalonica and the Paulites, and tells them, you, let you not be like the others who have no hope, because we have hope in God. He says, don't, be like, don't mourn like them, although your people are dying, because you have hope, because we know one day Jesus will come, and when with the shout of the sound of the trumpet and the shout of the archangel, then those who are dead, they will be raised, they will be given new bodies. And then they will be, have the ability to raise up. And those of us who will be alive will be transformed in new things. And we will go up to meet with the Lord. And there we shall be with the Lord forever. As I looked at this, I said, yes, heaven and eternal life cannot be divided. We must understand them as something that which are bound together. The distinction between those who have eternal life and those who don't is so clear when we meet with the Lord. Because in heaven, when we meet with the Lord and we are in the presence of God, there will be no fear. When we are in the presence, we meet with God, there will be no death because we shall live forever. When we are with the Lord, there will be no suffering. People many times who ask Theologians have tried to explain this. It has been a little difficult at times. They have said, for example, you remember in the Catholic Church, they looked at, then what do we say about those who have died and are they in heaven, are they in hell? Where are they? They said they are in purgatory. Purgatory is a place where you go and do a little pain. You suffer for some time. It might be a thousand years, a million years, two million years. You remember? And then after that time, when you have suffered for some time, then you'll be released into heaven. If you can't, you have, you have what is called mortal sin. You'll be released into hell. Purgatory is for those people who are suffering. Then the other one says, is, are they in heaven or are they in hell? So nobody knows. But one thing I know, he says it, those who die in the Lord are with the Lord. Why? Because Jesus tells us about the, the rich man and the, uh, and, and the poor man. You remember the, 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 the beggar Lazarus who was there and when he died, the Bible says, the angel took him and he, he went and was put at the bosom of Abraham where he was enjoying. We know there is heaven. Those who die will go and live together with the Lord. You remember the rich man? When he died, he went straight to hell, to a place where there is the absence of God. I want to say this. When we enter, when Jesus comes, when we accept the Lord and we are saved, then Jesus comes to us. What Jesus will do for us to enter heaven is just a simple thing. He will look at the way you used the gifts that he gave you. God will not go to judge you for the things that you have not done. He will look at the things that the gifts that he gave you. What did you do with them? What did you do with what God gave you? Jesus will look at the opportunities that he has given to you. 
What those opportunities that you are given as you live together with him, how did you use them? Jesus will look at how responsible were you with the gifts and the responsibilities that he gave to you. Were you a careless man? This is what will deny us entering into the place of rest. That's what he calls it. And this place of rest is where the presence of God is manifest and is whole. Those who are there, who will enter there, are the only faithful and obedient to God. So this morning, I want to tell you the reality of heaven. The presence of God in your life is real. But you must be faithful and obedient to him so that you can experience it. Now the earth, I like the way John puts it. He says he will create a new earth and a new heaven for us. The new earth is where the presence of God will be, will be experienced in fullness. What about hell? It's where the absence of God will be experienced in fullness. I know this might be a little difficult to explain. Because you may ask me, then God at one time will be absent in one place. Yes, where his love and his grace will not be experienced. Lastly, I want to say this. Heaven is when God will complete the work of salvation. That experience, when God will come and complete the work of, of salvation, is what will be heaven. This is the new creation that God will give to us. My question this morning is only one. How yearning are you to go into that new creation? Because it must be begun, begun here. Have you let yourself and said, I want to be in the new creation? Or you are still a coward, the fearful, those who are idolatrous, you know, the immoral, and all those things that are mentioned in the, in the book of Revelation. This morning, those who do such things, the Bible says their place is in hell, is in the lake of fire. The lake of fire is where Satan will be thrown, together with the death that we don't like, together with the beast, the false prophets, the demons, and those who are disobedient to God. The place where the absence of God will be felt. So I want to ask you as I finish, how much are you using the giftings that God has given you? Be it finances, be it your family. Can your family say you, the giftings that you have, you are using them? If you are in a responsible position, how much are you using the gifts that God has given you to serve the other people? It's only when we do that. It's only when we have a positive mind of what God has put for us and before us that we will be obedient to him. How much are you using the opportunities that God has put in front of you to serve others? When you meet somebody who needs help, do you help them? Or you look at them and you pass, like the Levite and the, uh, and, and, and the man who was on the road to Jericho? Are you there? Do you see yourself as a man? Who, as a woman who says, I want to use the rest, the, the opportunities that God has given me so that I can serve him and serve my neighbor. May God help us. May God challenge our hearts and tell us we want to enjoy a little heaven down here. We want to feel the presence of God, not just when he will come again to give us the eternal life, but now as I give myself to God and tell him, come, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, may you come into our hearts, come into our minds, come in every sphere of us so that we may experience you and we may experience about heaven as you speak to us. Yes, those who will be there, you look at the things they have done as you open the books because we will not have used the opportunities and the gifts you have given. Father, give us chance to record in those books our acts, our responsibilities, and the things that we want to do, our obedience to your word. More, 
by giving ourselves and getting the salvation which will give us eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen.